Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing super well today and enjoying yourselves the best that you can. My name is Misty Moss of Moss Photography. I am a boudoir photographer in Victoria, BC, Canada. And on this channel, we focus on boudoir photography, self-portrait photography, and all things self-love and self-empowerment. So if any of that sounds of interest to you or resonates with you, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that bell. And for today's video, we are doing a boudoir behind the scenes video focusing on dark and moody. Um, and we are going to do dark and moody with harsh, bright, full light. And I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but you can shoot dark and moody with bright, full sun. You don't need it to be super overcast and really dreary of a day to do it. And I am going to show you how to do it. And for today's video, we have the amazing Ruby Rocks, who is a model out of Vancouver, BC. You should definitely check her work out because she's fantastic. I will drop her Instagram and my Instagram down below in the description. And let's dive into this. important part which is your lighting if you are shooting dark and moody with harsh lights you are going to need surprise some full sun to create that harsh dramatic lighting in this first little behind the scenes snippet I'm getting a little creative with my light source and using a v-flat to block most of it so that I'm getting this really cool almost angelic stream of light from the top this is totally optional I was just getting a little creative um, the one thing I want you to take away from the lighting section is just always keeping in mind where your light is falling on your subject and where your subject is in relation to the light source so with um, diffused light and soft light it's a little bit easier to work with because it's not as harsh on your subject and it's not creating such harsh shadows. So it is just a tad more important that you are really mindful of how your light is hitting your subject and where their face is as well in relation to the light. You really need to make sure that their chin is up quite tall so they're not getting unflattering or weird shadows falling on their face. I'm using this spray called Atmospheric Aerosol as well to get this cool effect and I will leave it as a link down below in the description. Alright, step two is two parts. It is settings and posing. I put my settings up here for all y'all that are nosy and want to know. I am also shooting with a Canon EOS R and I am using a 35mm L-series lens, which is my go-to camera and lens for everything boudoir. Again, I am using this smoke spray and I have Ruby in this beautiful beam of light. Um, shameless plug, Ruby is an amazing model from Vancouver. You should totally check her out and book her to work with her if you are ever in the area. I will leave her information down below in the description. Um, so I want to talk about settings because it is so important when you're shooting dark and moody that you expose for your highlights. If you overexpose dark and moody photos, especially with this full sun, and you blow out your highlights, you can't get the details back. So your photos should look extremely dark when you put them, when they are straight out of camera. You almost won't even be able to show them to your client or model because they won't really know what's happening. That's how dark it should be. Um, you'll see in the editing portion, which is coming up, how dark my photos were, and I still probably could have shot a little bit darker. It is fundamental <laughs> that you expose for those highlights because once they're blown out you can't get them back so we really want to make sure that we are maintaining those details the other part of this step is the posing posing and getting your settings right are so important when you're using this unforgiving really dramatic light because it creates such harsh shadows you always have to be mindful of where your client is in relation to your light source i mentioned this earlier but you really want to make sure that their chin is up a lot because if they are tilted down in any way you're going to get weird shadows under their nose when i am shooting with my clients i'm constantly saying lift your chin lift your chin lift your chin it gets almost annoying um, because i'm just reminding them to always be lifting up to get that light hitting them just in the right spot 
However, shooting Dark and Moody in harsh light is still very similar to shooting it with diffused light. The biggest thing is just not being scared of that harsh light, getting your settings right, and being mindful of where your client is in relation to the light. Um, but when you're shooting dark and moody regularly, you always are still mindful of where your client is in relation to the light. So still kind of holding those fundamentals where you want your client to be side lit or slightly backlit um, so that you get that really sculpted dramatic light that is telltale of dark and moody, that really rim lit and kind of just highlighted effect that you get, which I will show you in some example photos coming up. Here's a great example of being really mindful of where your client is in relation to the light. I have Ruby's backside or her bum <laughs> facing towards the window ever so slightly just so that I'm getting some beautiful side light just on that part of her. This is classic dark and moody whether you're shooting harsh light or regular diffused light. Keeping in mind that whatever the light touches is what's the highlight of the photo and then everything else will be in shadow and will be the darkness to that kind of photo. So I wanted to talk about the editing process with you because it is a super key component in making the dark and moody vibe really come to life in your photos. So I've chosen three pictures from my session with Ruby that were already edited, but I'm going to show you anyways what that process looks like. So I'm primarily going to show you the first step in my process. So if you are on my Patreon and you're familiar with my editing tutorials that I do there, shameless plug, go check it out. I do them every month, almost. <laughs> um, you know that my editing process is a two-step process. So I bring everything into Lightroom and then I do what I call the base edit or the underpainting, which is um, applying a preset and kind of just tweaking it as I need for that particular image. And then when I feel like it's pretty good, I bring it into Photoshop and then that's really where the editing comes to life. And I really begin to paint the picture so it has that oil painting look that I really enjoy in my boudoir photos. So just to go over a little bit how the editing process really makes your photos come to life, let's do it. Let's do the thing. So here is Photo number one with color toning on. Yeah? Straight out of camera. So you can see straight out of camera, it's super dark. Your shadows are very black. Um, and then your highlights are there, but they're not overexposed because we were exposing for our highlights. So you can see I haven't lost any of the detail in her leg. You can still see the texture. Um, you can still see her face. It's not super blown out, but we can save the shadows by applying this preset um, and then I'll show you a couple other ones this one as well you can see using that posing and always being aware of where she is in relation to the light her chin is up super tall so we're not getting weird shadows underneath her nose um, the light is falling quite evenly on her face there she's got like a nice relaxed kind of expression and then with how she's angled towards the light we're also getting her back lit as well, as well as her little foot that's kind of popped up. So this is straight out of camera, seeing that we are exposing for the highlight, so we haven't lost any detail in her face. Super nice, super sharp, not blown out. Um, same with her back, it's perfect. And then kind of pulling out the details in the shadows by applying that preset. Um, right now, my favorite presets to use are Archipelago Nomad, I believe. Um, I love them. They're super moody, which is what I adore. I really like my photos to not be super true to color. Um, I love the reds and the warmth and the shadows um, and then kind of green and cool highlights. That shit's my jam. I used to do this all in Photoshop manually until I found these presets and was like, this does my job for me. It's great. All right, photo number three. So dark. You're like, I couldn't show this to a client um, from the back of the camera because it would be just indistinguishable. You wouldn't really be able to tell what's in the picture, but as soon as we start to edit it and kind of throw that preset on it, 
you can see that the shadows come to life again. We're still maintaining that detail in the highlights without ruining it. Um, but overall, we're kind of evening out the photo. So let's go over the settings and how we're achieving this. So here's the default. Again, just as a reminder, very, very dark. We've applied this preset and I've tweaked the living heck out of it because that's what you do. Um, <laughs> so here you can see I've really bumped up the exposure. I've really brought down the highlights. If I had left my highlights normal, this is what it would look like. So I'm really bringing those down to equalize the image. Same with the shadows. You see the shadows are pulled up to max. If I had left those as they are, it's super dark. You can't really tell what's going on in the background. Um, the photo just looks kind of muddy and just like a little bit just not not bueno. So we just pull those shadows up to save that detail. We could also do it with the blacks a little bit as well. Um, however, I like to kind of leave my blacks kind of down there. I also really enjoy bumping up the clarity in an image. Um, this is what it looks like neutral. It's okay, but adding that little bit of clarity, especially for dark and moody ones, is going to just add that little bit of contrast and texture that I really enjoy seeing in a photo. So regular and then bumped up. You're just kind of getting more of that detail in both the highlights and the shadows. There we go. That's kind of walking you through how I am taking this from a straight out of camera and making it into a work of art. Let's do that with this one as well. So we're here, face straight out of camera. Again, super dark in the shadows kind of blown out in the highlights just down on this book here, but then when we apply that base preset that I have saved, we're really saving all of the detail in the highlights and the shadows. Look, I can see text now. Wow! <laughs> all right, and same thing. You see the shadows are bumped up to max, really kind of taking that from being a little bit washed out to really saving those shadows. And this is like I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're a professional, so you are already shooting in RAW, but if you are not shooting in RAW, you must be shooting in RAW because you wouldn't be able to do this with JPEGs. So this is the importance of shooting in RAW um, versus not because you're saving all of those details that a JPEG just wouldn't be able to do. Um, all right, let's do a little close-up. So this is what it would look like if the highlights had not been crushed and brought down a little bit, and this is kind of what it looks like when we bring that down. So we're saving those highlights. Um, I can even like pull the contrast up a little bit here if I wanted to. Um, maybe do a little bit of this, a little bit of this. If I really wanted to go like super dark and moody and a really contrasty, um, but I kind of like to have my photos a little bit more neutralized, so a little bit more even, so it's not too, too contrasted. Um, but totally up to you and your personal style. All right, last one. Again, super dark. That was intentional though. We're shooting for these highlights, knowing that in post, we can save and bring back the details of these shadows. This is pretty consistent and no matter what dark and moody you're shooting, your images are always gonna turn out really dark straight out of camera so that you can preserve those details in the highlights. Um, and then know that you can bring them back in post. Um, there we go. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's the same thing. Shadows bumped all the way up. Uh, I've got my highlights down quite a bit. Contrast is down as well. Um, if my contrast was neutral, this is what it would look like. Very contrasty, um, which is why I just bring it down a little bit just to kind of even out the shadows and the highlights together and kind of paint the whole picture instead of just being super contrasty to the point of not really being able to distinguish what's going on. All right, there you guys have it. Um, you can also play around with your HSL sliders to kind of get the tones right, but for this one I really just wanted to go over lighting and how to change your settings to create a dark and moody photo from straight out of camera to a beautiful work of art if you're ever interested to see how I color tone and how I edit my photos in Photoshop to really give them that extra pop including skin editing you can always check out one of my other videos um, or check me out on patreon because I do editing tutorials like I said almost every month um, that is it for this video I hope that you enjoyed uh, this dark and moody harsh light how-to and behind the scenes if you have any questions 
or recommendations for content you want to see in the future, don't be afraid to pop it down below in the comment box, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye! Thank you.